Before we get started, I want to let you know that I have a second channel that I started recently called Bloom, where I talk about interesting stuff such as will the economy collapse because of this virus? When exactly this pandemic is going to end? Why the stock market is rising when the country is in a recession? Or even things such as what are the Tesla's five next big products? Some fascinating facts about World War II and a lot of other interesting stuff. There are already a lot of videos you can watch right now. So head to the channel by clicking in the link in the description and subscribe. A while ago, I made a video on the 5 books everyone should read and it seems like you guys have loved it. Everyone talks about that you should be reading 50, 60 or 100 books a year. But the truth is, you don't need to read that many books. Because most books are useless, especially when it comes to self-development. And I'm not just throwing words. At some point of my life, I was super obsessed with self-help books that I have read every self-help book that I came across. But that doesn't mean that every self-help book is useless. In fact, some of them were so powerful that they had a significant impact on my life. And if you don't have the time or isn't a big fan of books, I want to share with you the ones that you have to read because they would make a difference in your life. Most of what these books teach supposed to be taught by your parents, teachers back in high school or professors at your university, but unfortunately they do not. I still read books but not as many as I used in the past because when you read an entire 300 page book and there is not a single new idea, you feel like you have wasted so much time. So let me share with you the books that would actually teach you something valuable. The 50th Law by Robert Greene This is one of the books that had one of the most significant impacts on my life and there is a strong reason behind it. You see, unlike every other self-help book, this book teaches you how to be fearless, how not to be afraid to be different, how to stand up for yourself, how to take risks and make bold decisions. The book is based on the life of Curtis Jackson, aka 50 Cent. The life of some rapper might not interest you, and that's what I thought in the beginning. But there was every reason for 50's life to go wrong, but it didn't. He never met his dad, his mom was shot when he was 8, he was living with his grandparents in a house with 28 other siblings, he was left with no other option but to sell drugs to make ends meet like his mother, got arrested at high school for drug possession, tried his best to make it into the music industry, but when he was 25, a car pulled up alongside Jackson and a guy pulled a gun and shot him 9 times on the hand, arm, hip, both legs, chest and left cheek. It's a miracle in the first place that he survived. Besides that, he tried to get out of drugs and make it into the music, but now with his left cheek being shot, he couldn't rap. Any other person would have given up at this point, because the shot through his cheek left him with a permanent swollen tongue, but not 50. He was not ready to give up. He decided to gather his energy and fight back. Now that he has faced death, there is nothing left for him to be afraid of. Failure, disappointment, whatever. If you want to develop that kind of fearless approach to life, you must make certain changes in your life that Robert Greene suggests in his book. Nobody is born into this world fearless. We all come out crying, screaming, but as we grow up, we are afraid of darkness. We are afraid to be alone, we are afraid to be different, we are afraid of our parents, at least when we are kids. We have to either develop the character of fearlessness or stay where we are, where the society wants us to be. Influenced by Robert Cialdini There are a lot of books written on the art of dealing with people. Even Robert Greene has a book on that which is 48 Laws of Power and I actually suggested it in the previous video. However, it gives a bit darker perspective on human behavior, and in many ways that's true. But the book Influenced by Robert Cialdini gives an entirely different perspective. It's more about the science behind making people say yes to whatever you want them. It might seem like people are smart and they usually base their decisions on science and logic, but the reality is quite different. Humans are mostly emotional and their actions are often irrational. 
And it's normal because we face so many decisions and we consume so much information every single day that we need some sort of shortcuts to make the decision process faster. We are guided by these shortcuts. The moment you understand these shortcuts, you can make almost anyone say yes. You can convince them to be your friend, help you out. Or if you're a salesman, you can get them to buy as much as you want and get that big fat commission at the end of the month. The richest man in Babylon. From my experience, almost everyone wants to be rich, even those who say they don't. I know that I will get a lot of hate for saying this, but that's what I have realized. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, money is a resource that enables you to do a lot of things, a lot of good things. Of course, the most popular advice is just work hard. Hard work will always pay off. To be honest, it doesn't unless it's smart as well. And that's why you need to read The Richest Man in Babylon by Samuel Classen. Once upon a time in ancient Babylon, there was a very rich man named Arcade. In fact, he was the richest man on the land. Two of his childhood friends approached him to ask him how he managed to become so wealthy when they have been working so hard but barely fed their families. He replied that the secret is simple. You must not spend all the money you earn but save apart from it and invest. And over time your wealth will accumulate and you get rich. It's as simple as that. Arcade saved enough to lend it to a shield maker who paid interest on Arcade's loan, thus growing his wealth. These principles might be simple, but most people do not embrace them, which is why it's critical to read this book page to page to make these principles a fundamental part of your life. Without any exaggeration at all, the greatest financial habit you will ever learn is the ability to save money. It sounds so simple and yet it's so difficult. Think about how much money you have earned in your entire life and now ask yourself how much of that left in your hands. Flow by Mihai Chixen Mihi. I hope I'm pronouncing this name correctly. Most people are dissatisfied with their daily routine and often it's their jobs to blame. What makes things much worse is that their leisure time is spent recovering from their work in the laziest way possible. What do you do when you get back home? Watch TV, have some drinks, pull out that cigarette if you smoke, or maybe just play video games. But that shouldn't be the case. Work can be something that reduces stress, gives your life purpose, and makes you happy overall. And that's why Mihai calls the state of flow. It's when you are not motivated by external factors such as money or recognition. The work itself brings you so much joy that it takes your entire attention and pushes you to do it regardless of the outcome. That's the state that made Newton to come up with the modern principles of physics and Einstein to develop the theory of relativity. It's extremely difficult to reach that stage in the modern age because we have so much distractions such as drugs, alcohol. And the saddest part is, if you do not experience the state of flow in your life, you're wasting your time. And that's what makes this book so important to read. He explains how exactly you can reach that state. 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson I came across this book last year and to be honest, it surprised me. It doesn't say anything revolutionarily, but if you know anything about Jordan Peterson, he advocates for responsibility. His perspective on life is that responsibility gives meaning to our lives. Whether you agree with him or not, life is pretty purposeless when there is nothing to bear on your shoulders. However, the little rules he suggests to follow do make our lives much better, such as setting your house in perfect order before you criticize someone else or compare yourself to someone who you were yesterday and not to who someone else is today. They seem so simple that everyone just should know them, but the matter of the fact is people are living miserable lives because they are not following these rules. Look around, everyone is criticizing everyone else, but if you give a closer look into their lives, you will find out that they probably should focus on their lives first before pointing fingers. It was challenging to make this list because there were so many books I wanted to include, at least a few more, but I had to keep this list as short as possible. There is no point in reading 
a lot of books. You just have to read the right books, the books that will give you maximum benefit and implement them in your life. Let me know what books would you recommend to everyone to read. I am curious to see what would you suggest. In any ways, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed this video and of course, subscribe and hit that bell button besides it. Thanks for watching and until next time.